Welcome to Type-C Tech Reviews. Today we're gonna to be unboxing the LG 34 GP 950G. If at any point during the video you wanna check out this exact same monitor, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. But let's get this thing unboxed. All right, so this opens from the top, cut these two, and make sure that this is facing down because this way is the front. So opening this right up automatically, this is a lot more premium than typical monitors. You got this nice little box here that says accessories, very premium. So opening this up, what do we have in here? So instead of just having all this loose, it's nice in here. I'm not sure what this is. Maybe it's a small cable clip, I'm not sure. We have the power brick right here. This is not an internal, obviously not an internal power supply. So you do have your external brick, although fairly long cable right there. You have the other part of the power right there. Then it comes with an HDMI cable. It comes with a USB type B cable. This is to power the USBs on the back. You do have to connect this if you want those powered. And then you get a display port cable right here. And then some of the instruction manuals and things like this. I'm not sure exactly what this is. So check the full review if you want to find that out. All right. And then right away in the box, we have the stand right here. This is the classic premium stand from LG. You have the two high quality quality thumb screws in the back. And as you can see right here, Nvidia G-Sync Ultimate, which this monitor does have G-Sync Ultimate, which is pretty big. Now to get the rest of the stand out, we're gonna set this aside and then we're gonna pull this up. We're gonna take this out. Really good packaging. We have the monitor right here, very protected, even if the box gets damaged. And then we have the rest of the stand right here. Again, this is the premium one with all the height adjustability and everything you want, really nice. All right, now after you have this one out, you can see it has all of that height adjustability right there ultra gear on the side. All you have to do to put this together is line these up, place them in there just like that. And then you can just use your thumbs to screw these in with these nice little thumb screws right here. A very strong, sturdy, and a very attractive stand for sure. Now after this, set that aside and we're gonna take this out. This is a little bit more difficult because this is an ultra wide. So you're gonna lift this straight out of the box. We're gonna set it down there. And then we're gonna pull back this plastic right here. Now once this is all pulled back, this is just a clip-in monitor. So all you're gonna need to do, grab your stand right here, line the top up first, and then place it right in there. Now, right off the bat, this is a very premium monitor. Now I have the version before this, the less expensive one, really nice. That's what I use every single day. There's a couple key differences right here. Very premium, come over here. First, we can see all of the space for heat to come out here because this monitor is gonna get a little bit hotter because again, a lot more premium, brighter, better in every way. Then across here, we have this nice little accent and almost like fake metal right here. Really like that. Now in the back, we've seen this design and a lot of other monitors. This one is a lot more premium. These holes are actually there, not just for looks, but now for actual ventilation. All of these are different. They are much more premium. Then back here, obviously I'm not a big fan of RGB on monitors. I don't think it matters but you do get an RGB ring back there. That's kind of cool, it's kind of premium. Now looking straight away at the ports, we have one HDMI. Interesting we don't have two, I don't mind it though. Then we have a display port, two USBs, a three and a half millimeter out, and that USB type B, the upstream port for these two USB type A's. Now another thing right away is on the bottom right here, we're gonna tilt this up a little bit. As we can see, we have the typical controller and then we have a wheel. I don't know what this is for, but we're definitely gonna try to find that out. But let's get this on the desk, get initial and gaming impressions, and then we're gonna get a ghosting test as well as going through that menu system. All right guys, right away having it on the desk. First, let's come back and look at the RGB really quick. You can see behind it, it's actually not on right now. I'm gonna see if the volume wheel, maybe that's not a volume wheel. I'm not sure what it does yet. Let's check the menu system. Okay, so going right into the menu system, Really interesting. I've used the newer style LG menu. This looks different. It's actually like squared off. Um, so that is interesting. I've never used the LG menu system looking like this. Maybe it's custom made for this monitor. Okay, so going into it, middle click. This is similar, uh, but it's definitely a little bit different. That is interesting. But yeah, definitely nicer than the old generation one. It's only on 144 Hertz. We have G-Sync on, overclock on, HDRs off, response time on fast. We can go into the different color settings right here. You can see these are the different color settings, the different picture modes. We're just gonna keep it in Gamer 1, go down to Game Adjust. We have overclock on which means this should go up to 180 or 185 Hertz. We have the black stabilizer, the response time, which is fast, fast, or normal. That's all gonna be tested at the end of the video. We have an FPS counter. And then going down to picture settings, let's actually go, look at this. It's only at 40% brightness right now. It's incredibly vibrant. Such a beautiful panel. Let's turn this all the way up to 100%. 
Let's do it. Turning it all the way up. 50% is insanely bright. Wow, absolutely beautiful at 100% brightness. This thing is gorgeous. Uh, definitely brighter than the GP83AB, which is also a 34 inch ultra wide also by LG. And going down here, local dimming. So this one has, like a TV, has local dimming. That's incredibly cool. We're gonna set this all the way to aggressive uh, and just, we're gonna kind of do the whole thing with local dimming on aggressive. Wow, what a beautiful picture. All right, before we get in game, let's go into NVIDIA control panel real quick. All right, so it's on 144 Hertz. Overclock said it was on when I opened up the monitor, but after messing with it uh, just a little bit, you have to turn it off and then back on. It'll restart the display for a second. And then you can see here, we have the option for 180 Hertz, which we're absolutely gonna do. Let's check to see if it can do 10 bits of color with that 180 Hertz. Let's see, and it can. That's impressive. All right, but let's get in game. Let's play some Halo and see how this thing games. Right away, just seeing this is an absolutely beautiful picture. It's quite bright in this room with all the lights and a window in here. This thing is absolutely beautiful and vibrant, even with all of that. Okay, so jumping right in game. Oh my God, the reds in here, the sunset, absolutely stunning. Probably the most beautiful monitor I have ever used. The resolution is a good resolution, uh, especially if you're as far away as I am, even if you're up here, it's a good resolution. Um, and 180 Hertz, that's really bumping it up quite a bit. Now, if you go from 144 to 100 and 160 or 165, not that big of a difference. 180 Hertz is really bumping it up. That means the actual response time is gonna be faster. Uh, I mean, this thing, it's incredibly smooth at 180 Hertz. It is absolutely gorgeous. The colors, the vibrancy, the smoothness. I mean, this is an end game monitor. This is a monitor you can literally buy and keep it and use it for everything. Cause not only is this thing amazing at gaming, but just like the other one that I daily drive, I use it for editing all of my videos. I use it for color corrective work, um, watching movies, anything you want. This thing is unbelievable. Uh, and it's even better than the last one, which was basically perfect. I have incredibly high expectations for this, uh, especially during the full review. So make sure to subscribe below for that. Uh, but right away, uh, without even using this for more than five minutes, this thing is absolutely jaw-dropping, even to someone that uses the other one, right? That uses the one that's only $500 cheaper than this one. On a daily basis, this is jaw-dropping to use. Now, from these monitors, I expect a lot because they basically take everything and they're good at everything. The only thing that these things really are not good at uh, is the contrast ratio. However, the vibrancy is so unbelievable that you don't really mind it. And the brightness, especially in here. Now again, we have local dimming on right now, and this just looks, with dark areas and very light areas. Obviously, that's gonna be tested in the full review. Um, however, just from looking at it, it looks like it's doing a really good job. I just keep wanting to look over here at the beautiful sunset. It's so bright, uh, it's so lifelike, uh, especially with games that have great graphics like Halo infinite i mean this is just this is just amazing guys now i review a lot of budget monitors this one is far from budget at i think a little bit over thirteen hundred dollars it is definitely not a budget monitor and from the unboxing experience to getting it and using it it does not feel budget at all it also i was expecting this to feel a lot like the gp 83 ab and on paper, they look fairly similar with this one having higher stats. It's an entirely different experience. This one is another amount. It's another level of premium uh, and just overall a gorgeous picture that is completely fluid and probably the best ultra wide gaming experience you're going to get in a modern day consumer monitor. All right, but that's enough gaming. Even though I wanna to continue to play, we gotta test the ghosting. Let's do it right now. First, we're gonna set this to an off setting. Now, the kind of unbelievable thing is in off, there is a little bit of ghosting on really good monitors, on monitors that I say more budget monitors. In fact, the one that I just reviewed, the 27 inch GN650, I believe, this is about how much ghosting it had in the fast setting, which is the one that you want all the time. However, this is barely anything. It's not even noticeable. So even in the slowest setting, this thing looks unbelievable. Let's go up to normal and try it out. Not a huge difference between off and normal. Let's go over into fast. Okay, so in fast, it has basically none, probably one of the best 
out there for ghosting. It looks incredible. There's basically none there. However, if we set it into faster, it doesn't do anything right away. Although once you leave, you can see here a ton of inverse ghosting. So don't ever set it in that one. Um, I'm not sure why it changes once you're not in there. Uh, however, that is a little bit strange. We're gonna set it in off and leave again. No, so those are the same. However, just to make sure you don't do this, don't ever set it in faster, set it in fast. This is pretty much typical of all LG monitors, but you can see here, I'm gonna show you what I see. No ghosting, insane. But yeah, guys, overall from first impressions, unbelievable. The best monitor I think I've ever used. Again, if you wanna check it out, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. However, I will be doing a full review coming up very, very soon, so make sure to subscribe below. And I will even be comparing it directly with my GP83AB, which is a 34 inch, basically very similar to this, but this one just takes it a step higher. Is this one worth it over that one? Make sure to subscribe to find out. This was Type C Tech Reviews, and I'll see you guys in the next video.